So you are told to buy your high-res music online, but did they tell you too how to play it back? Although I still buy CDs from time to time, my stereo haven't seen a CD player for a long time. I copy the CD immediately to a hard disk and play it from there. This I do for almost 15 years now and I would never go back. Over the years I have had many systems for research but also for pleasure. In this video I will discuss the basic ideas behind music players after which you can select from a number of videos for more in-depth information. Ever since the invention of the phonograph, music players use the same basic components. A storage device, a reading device, amplification and a reproduction device. The phonograph used a shellac disc as storage, a needle mounted on a membrane as reading device, the membrane as reproduction device and a horn to amplify the sound. An open reel tape recorder based system uses magnetic tape as storage, a replay head to read the magnetic waves, electronic amplification and loudspeakers. A turntable uses a vinyl disc as storage, the needle is mounted on a cantilever that moves inside a cartridge that is mounted in a tone arm. The signal is electronically amplified and sent to a speaker. A cassette recorder is in essence a tape recorder with the reels inside a cassette. Also the first quarter of the digital era a disc, the CD, was used as storage. It was the internet combined with dad's old computer that offered youngsters tools to share music. When it started the internet was rather slow, depending on telephone landlines. Therefore they used a lossy compression method called MPEG-2 layer 3 also known as MP3, to reduce the file size up to a factor 10. Dad's old computer didn't have a lot of storage room and the PC speakers didn't reproduce quality, while downloading an album was 10 times faster. Depending on the complexity of the music, MP3 throws away a lot of detail information. A simple guitar track doesn't contain a lot of information and therefore might sound almost equal to the uncompressed version. Complex music like symphonic music, opera, dance music and compl complex rock like that of Queen can't be reduced by a factor 10 without throwing away a lot of details and therefore will sound clearly less when played on a system that is capable of reproducing those details. MP3 is one of the reasons Computer based audio systems got a bad name amongst those that cherish audio quality. The other reason is the computer itself. Computers usually are not designed for audio reproduction and as long as the audio is digital there is no need to use special computers. It's only when the bits have to be translated into analog sound things become rather critical. See the connecting your DAC series for more information on this. The link is in the top right corner. Although it seldom happens, computers can be optimized for audio. In fact, a CD player is a computer too. Every digital music player uses one or more storage devices, an operational control system, digital analog conversion and a user interface. The CD player uses a CD in a CD drive that is controlled by the operational control system that in turn receives instructions from the user interface called the remote control. Now what if we mount a hard disk inside a CD player and when you insert a CD into a CD drive it have it automatically copy it to a hard disk. The next time you want to hear that music you don't need to get the CD out of the storage but just play it from the internal hard disk. That might seem ideal but there are two problems. First, you will need to name the files on the hard disk and second, the small display of a CD player is not suited to browse the hard disk. Therefore, this kind of players today have a network connector and or a Wi-Fi board to connect the player to the home network and thus to the internet. On the internet, the player can find all information about most CDs and automatically add that information the so-called metadata to the files and since the player is connected to the home network you can use a smartphone or tablet with a dedicated app to name the albums 
that are not found on the web and browse the hard disk to select music to play. So the network standalone ripper player is an all-in-one solution that uses a smartphone or tablet for control and copies a CD to an internal hard disk. Since there is a network connection, it is also possible to play music from other computers or copy music from a computer to the player. It is the ideal solution for those that like simplicity and hate computers. People that are handy with computers will say, let me do the ripping on my computer and add the correct metadata there, and then copy it to the player over the home network. Hardware wise, this will be identical to the network standalone ripper player, but without the CD drive and the software to collect metadata from the web. As we have seen, the previous two players can not only play music from their own hard disk, but also from shared volumes on the network. Shared volumes are hard disks of parts thereof in a computer that are made available to other users and devices on the home network. Many people prefer to store music on their computer and not on the network player. One of the advantages is that hard disks in a computer are easier replaced or added for more storage. But you need to be sure that both your computer and network can provide the music files at sufficient speed. This will normally be the case unless other programs or net activities use large amounts of capacities. Computers are rather powerful today and you might wonder if the operational control system can be handled by the computer as well and indeed that's possible too. Still using the smartphone or tablet and a dedicated app, you control software on the computer over the network. That control software then looks for the music files and sends it to a dumb player, usually called a renderer. The last step is to leave out the renderer and connect the computer more or less directly to the stereo. Note the more or less. Most computers have the A conversion built in, but these are by definition incapable of producing quality sound because of the high level of noise inside the computer. Therefore you need to use an external sound card, which we audiophiles call the A converter. For more in-depth information on each way of working, please select one of the videos that appear in the menu at the end of this video. I am also working on videos about ripping, that's copying CDs to the hard disk and how to handle metadata. So follow my Facebook or Google Plus page or my Twitter account to stay informed. You can also post questions there, but please view my questions video first. See the link in the top right corner. You will find the information below this video on YouTube. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and tell your friends on the web about it. I am Hans Beekhuizen for the HB channel, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the hbproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.